This is the KHON2 News at 10 with Joe Moore, Hawaii's number one news. It's a popular lunch spot in Kapahulu, but it's operating illegally. They need to be in the right place and they need to obey the law. Paying for street parking. Sometimes it doesn't add up. It's a little confusing to me. That's kind of weird. We found meters that were not working right, so we asked what's being done to fix them and a ploy to trick HECO customers for money. Hi, my name is Amy, and I'm calling from HECO. How imposters are taking their scheme to the next level. Good evening, and thank you for joining us on this Monday, the 12th of August. Lunch wagons are part of our island tradition, and over the past few years, there have been a lot of new food trucks popping up. Some have taken up permanent residence in a gravel lot in Kapahulu illegally. Marissa Yamani reports on what the city is doing about it. Marissa? Joe, the Department of Planning and Permitting received numerous complaints from the community. Inspectors went to investigate and found that the lunch wagons were in violation of the building code and land use ordinance. Kapahulu Avenue is a busy street lined with restaurants and shops, and there's even a lot with food trucks. Problem is, these lunch wagons are doing business here illegally. Normally a lunch wagon would not need a building permit because it's a uh, uh, transient type of vehicle uh, that moves uh, on a daily basis. But these lunch wagons are here around the clock. They don't go home with the owners. So they're no longer considered vehicles at this point. They're considered structures and so they're in violation of the building code. The Department of Planning and Permitting sent this notice of violation to the property's owner on June 13th, which says that building permits are required and they have 30 days to either get permits or correct the violation. But July 13th came and went and nothing was done. We're uh, preparing a notice of order, which would uh, basically initiate civil fines. I am going to recommend the maximum, which is $1,000 a day. The Wong Family Trust is listed as the owner of this property at 755 Kapahulu. For years, it was the site of a Shell gas station, but that got torn down a couple years ago and the lot sat vacant until this past February. That's when the property manager says he got a lease from the owner with the intention of turning it into a food truck venue until the owner starts to develop it. So he rents out spots to food trucks like Hank's. Until they start construction, I was told that we're going to be able to do business here for as long as it's feasible. On June 27th, the city issued a second notice of violation for a different offense. The second notice of violation, the owner has uh, chosen to evade us and basically not accept service. Under city law, a B2 business zoned lot must have an all-weather surface and landscaping. Basically, um, you cannot put a commercial uh, operation on an un you know, unprepared lot. But the city's not against, uh, and DPP are not against lunch wagons. We think they're great, but they need to be in the right place and they need to obey the law. And that's the bottom line, right? That's the bottom line. The DPP is a complaint-driven department, so they don't go out looking for lunch wagons in violation. They just followed up on complaints. The landowner now faces hefty fines and potentially a lien on the property and even the possibility of foreclosure if nothing is done. Marissa Yamane, KHO 1, 2 News. Repair work to fix a rusty guardrail along Kalaniana Ole Highway is about to get started. We first told you about the problem last month. The rusty guardrail is near Sandys between Lanai Lookout and the Halona Blowhole. Repair work is impacting traffic. Both sides of Kalaniana Ole Highway are closed from Lunalilo Home Road to Keala Ho Street until 4 o'clock in the morning. The work will continue through Thursday. Every second counts when you park in a metered stall. But a Honolulu woman did not get what she paid for when she parked her car in a metered stall on Kona Street. 
She called Action Line for help and we checked into it. We put our own money into several meters run by Ampco. Most of the meters gave drivers extra time, anywhere from a few seconds to over a minute. In another meter, we put in four quarters for an hour, but it only gave us 45 minutes. We had to put in another 50 cents for it to give us one hour. Someone who wasn't paying attention might not have caught the mistake. Uh, I should, not all the time, no. <laughs> like now, I don't know, I just kind of put in, the meat, uh, put in the money and ran. If it's incorrect towards my favor, then no. But if it was incorrect, like if it was speeding up or something, then I would be a little worried. We alerted AMCO and they told us they inspect these meters periodically. They said the malfunctioning meters will be fixed. Local businesses are being targeted by someone posing as a Hawaiian Electric employee. It's clever enough that the caller ID even says the calls are coming from HECO. Hi, my name is Amy and I'm calling from HECO. The reason for the call is because the payment for the, the last payment that we processed, it did not go through. The caller says the customer's last payment was not processed and they need the money fast or the power will be shut off. The caller says a technician will be coming by to collect the payment. We know that a number of our customers have called and reported this to us and checked it out and thankfully they haven't fallen victim to any of these scams, uh, but we don't know. There are possibly some customers who have. The caller says payment must be paid by an electronic bill payer called Money Pack. Hawaiian Electric says it never accepts that form of payment. Similar calls were also made on Maui and the Big Island. A businessman who calls himself Hawaii's fittest CEO pled not guilty today to theft. The state says between 2010 and 2012, David Lowe and his company got three investors to purchase over $257,000 in securities. He told them the money would be put into an annuity, Roth IRA, or pooled for their future use and benefit. But Lowe is accused of spending the money on himself. He's charged with five counts of theft and faces 10 years in prison for each count if he's convicted. Lowe is scheduled to go to trial on October October 14th. His bail is set at $110,000. A Halava man has been charged with fourth degree arson in connection with the brush fire last month. I should have said Holly Eva man. Police say 35 year old Scott Mack was burning rubbish in his backyard when the high winds fanned the flames and it quickly grew out of control, burning a total of 10 acres. Mack will be in court tomorrow. He faces up to a year in jail. Those who live or work in Wahiwa know how bad traffic is in that area. In fact, the traffic starts on the H2 freeway. There's a line of cars waiting to exit into Wahiwa, and that backlog gets worse during the commute home. So the Department of Transportation is planning to restrike part of Kamehameha Highway. A lane will be added near Lake Wilson heading north. We also see that traffic um, in, during the down season in the sense where when the military is um, deployed, uh, that the traffic still exists because of the amount of people that go to the North Shore. The state is also looking to remove this crosswalk on the highway at Olive Avenue, hoping to relieve some of the congestion there. The DOT says this project is in the early stages. Road work could start before next summer. An act that was supposed to be a joke goes too far. A rodeo clown pokes fun at the president, sparking outrage and the demand for someone to be held accountable. That story is next. Plus, a Florida resort is partially swallowed by a sinkhole. First, Justin Cruz joins us with details on a powerful typhoon headed towards China. Just yeah, thanks, Joe. Ch typhoon Utor, recently responsible for at least one death in the Philippines, is now back over water with winds at 115 miles per hour and headed to South China, maybe around Wednesday, Hawaii time. Here at home, no hurricanes to worry about, but just watching a few thunderstorms far to the southeast of the islands. None of them expected to directly affect us, but we just keep an eye on for. Uh, on these storms for any sort of organization. And for this week's Work Week weather, those details are coming up on the KHON2 News at 10.
This portion of KHON2 News is sponsored by the Hawaii Honda Dealers. At Maddie. A Missouri congresswoman is describing a rodeo stunt mocking President Obama as shameful and unacceptable. It happened during a bull riding competition at the Missouri State Fair. A rodeo clown wearing a mask of President Obama walks into the ring and with a microphone he'd been given, asked the crowd if anyone wanted to see Obama run down by a bull. It sparked a firestorm of criticism by both Democratic and Republican officials. We just had a tremendous fair and a lot of fun and everything's going great and then, and then it just takes one idiot to, to do something like that. It's just very disappointing. You know, we hold them accountable and, uh, and we certainly hold this, uh, this person accountable for, for their actions and, uh, you know, we're going to, he, he will not be out here again, I promise you that. The Missouri Rodeo Cowboy Association says the act was not scripted and the rodeo clown is banned from the fair for life. The regular rodeo announcer said he had no idea what the clown was going to say. Imagine staying at a hotel when suddenly the walls start caving in. That's what happened at a resort in Claremont, Florida after a sinkhole swallowed part of the building in the middle of the night. The Summer Bay Resort is 10 minutes from Disney World. About 30% of the resort was swallowed by the 100-foot sinkhole. We could hear the cracking and, and the ceiling and glass breaking, and we decided that we better get out as soon as possible. One of our guests reported a window crack out. Uh, our security uh, came right to the scene, assessed the situation, and evacuated all of our residents from 48 of our units. No one was hurt. The resort's president says there were no warning signs that a sinkhole was developing. Testing done 15 years ago showed the land under the resort was stable. A cable car ride above the mountains of Ukraine turned into a rescue operation after two cable cars got stuck. A total of 75 tourists were trapped. They had to be lowered down with ropes and harnesses. Some of them were stuck 500 feet above ground. The entire rescue took about eight hours because the winds were gusty. Can inducing labor make a child autistic? Up next, the two factors that could explain a link. Plus, why a judge changed the name of a seven-month-old baby. Tomorrow on Wake Up Today. How to keep your dog cool during the summer months. And do you need more storage for small spaces? Lauren Max got you covered. It's Shoe Week at Ross, featuring the top brands for men, women, and kids at unbeatable savings. These athletic shoes are $30 elsewhere, but if you want the same shoes for less than half, you got to go to Shoe Week at Ross. Ku'uleilani speaks from her heart about Levitt, Yamane, and Soldner. They gave me hope to not give up. They gave me hope that it's only a minor setback that we'll get through this together. And when they say we'll get through this together, I still get calls. And this is two years after the accident. Call Levitt, Yamane, and Soldner. To be grateful for them, to be personal that way, is priceless. Priceless. I consider them good friends. I've been many places. Tasted all the flavors. Craving something decadent? Indulge in a creamy Oreo shake from Burger King. Hand spun vanilla soft serve, everyone's favorite Oreo cookie pieces, vanilla sauce, and sweet whipped topping. Or try our made to order warm Oreo brownie sundae, smothered in velvety vanilla soft serve and rich creamy chocolate sauce. Oh yeah, Burger King, where taste is king. Oh yeah. Better hurry to Shoe Week at Ross. See all the latest styles, the hottest brands, all at unbeatable savings. Like these flats, $50 at department stores. But if you want them for less than $16, you gotta go to Shoe Week at Ross. Wednesday on Cool Corner Concerts, we welcome Erica Ilona to the stage. That's Cool Corona Concerts, Wednesday at 9 on Cage 2 for me personally, the best part is 
telling stories. That's just a privilege and an honor to be able to tell the stories that affect people's lives. The teamwork that's involved. I mean, we have multiple meetings throughout the day to make sure that our news product is always the best it can be with the information that people in Hawaii need to know. Justin Cruz and Kathy Moneno, weekdays on the KHON2 News at 5. The biggest study of its kind says pregnant women who induce labor are more likely to have autistic children. Researchers say there are two factors that may link autism to the process of speeding up labor. They say it's possible labor-inducing drugs might increase the risk, or the increased risk might stem from an underlying problem with the pregnancy. The results are preliminary, and researchers emphasize doctors should not avoid inducing labor since it can be be life-saving for mothers and babies. A seven-month-old baby is the focus of controversy. His name is Messiah, and it's not sitting well with a judge in Tennessee who has ordered his parents to change his name. The judge got involved when Messiah's parents couldn't agree on his last name. The judge settled on McCullough for the baby's last name, but she didn't like that. His first name was Messiah, so she changed it to Martin. The word Messiah is a title, and it's a title that has only been earned by one person, and that one person is Jesus Christ. Everybody believes what they want, so I think I should be able to name my child what I want to name him. The baby's mother is appealing the judge's decision According to the Social Security Administration's annual list of popular baby names, Messiah is among the fastest rising baby names in 2012. Now that's a surprise. The video of a woman's priceless reaction to some good news has gone viral. Lee Kreps of North Carolina is sent on a scavenger hunt in her kitchen. After searching all over, she finds a bun in the oven. It takes a second, but then it dawns on her. A bun! <laughs> Lee's children say she's always talking about grandkids, so they thought this would be the perfect way to give her the good news that her son's wife is pregnant. For those who like to stay up a little late, there is a meteor shower tonight, and Justin is back with details. Yeah, thanks, Joe. It's the Perseid meteor shower, and here's a few pics of the action from last night's viewing conditions. Might be better for Kauai and the Big Island because we have some high clouds moving in over Oahu and Maui. But it's worth a try because there are lighter than normal showers tonight. More on that and the work week forecast coming up next. Geo. Bunga. Geo. Bunga. Geo Bunga. Hawaii's largest selection of garden products and plants. Discover what so many people have already found. Geo Bunga. The surf report in the KHO Winter News is sponsored by Pacifico. The tide is in. Hawaii's forecast, KHON 2's Justin Cruz. Another sunny Aloha Tuesday in store for the islands tomorrow. There will just be a few windward showers. I'll show you those coming in on the radar in just a second. But by the time lunchtime rolls around tomorrow, there will be plenty of blue sky for you to enjoy. 79 degrees in Honolulu, slightly warmer in Kaluakona at 78 and 76 for Lihui, Kauai. Now, overall, we do have a calm weather pattern near the islands right now. Some high clouds moving through. Again, that might block the viewing for at least a central portion of the islands for that Perseid meteor shower. But overall, uh, we'll have other nights this week that you can also check out the meteor shower. So it's not just a one-time thing. Uh, but no uh, storm systems to really affect the islands right now. High pressure to the northeast, bringing in those trade winds and the trade showers that you see tonight, which are actually lighter than normal uh, for a typical uh, uh, trade shower evening. So although we will see showers moving through, again, we're not seeing anything heavy. And even the frequency of the showers that are coming through right now 
now are going to be on the lighter side and have been on the lighter side. In surf, no large massive swells, very calm conditions for the ocean right now. Uh, one to two for the south shore, two to four, that's a little bit of a trade swell action for the east shore, and then one to two for the north and flat to two for the west. So tomorrow, again, mostly sunny skies, maybe a few isolated showers in the morning. Trades 10 to 25, and that holds for the next few days, in fact. Not only the trade wind speeds, but the calm, sunny weather. And it's expected to last even through the upcoming weekend and through the early part of next week. So for those that are still not back yet in school and enjoying the summer break, you have plenty more days of sunshine to have fun. I know there's a few schools that start tomorrow, including my son's. Yeah, mid-pack starts tomorrow. Yeah. I know that I think next week, uh, I believe it might be I Iolani, but a lot of the public schools are slowly uh, getting back into the, the school year. So. I think you're right about yeah. Iolani because my son was kidding one of his friends who goes to Iolani. Right, you know, and they get back. Or no, the son, the, mm. my, my son's friend was teasing Bryce that, that he, he has, has to, to go, go back early. early. Yes, ah, I yes, see, yes. yeah. All right, thanks, Jess. You're welcome. Where the Rainbow Wahine volleyball team is ranked in the preseason coaches poll. Kanoa Lehi has that next. Plus, Mantai Teo talks for the first time about getting sidelined by a foot injury and how he feels about his NFL preseason debut last week. And later, a daredevil turns up the heat on his high wire stunt by adding a few dangerous tricks to the mix. For all your auto body and paint repair needs, trust Dent Doctors Hawaii. Big or small, we fix it all. With KHON2 Sports, Kanoa Lee. How you doing, everybody? Let's talk sports. The Rainbow Wahine volleyball team will begin the upcoming season in the same spot it ended the previous season, ranked 11th in the country. The first AVCA coaches poll of the new V-ball year was released today, and Hawaii was put in the 11th spot. Wahine are set to open the season August 30th against defending national champ Texas. Longhorns got placed in the top spot of the rankings, receiving 55 of 60 first place votes. Other opponents on the schedule that were included in the top 25 are number 20. 12 UCLA, 24th ranked Wichita State, and number 25 Creighton. Hawaii returns seven seniors this season, including two time All American and reigning Big West Player of the Year Emily Hartong. Now, individual tickets for Rainbow Wahine Volleyball and Rainbow Warrior Football are now on sale. Speaking of UH football, that season opener is August 29th against USC. And with running back Joey Yosefa still recovering from a fractured foot, the coaching staff looked for added help. On the other side of the ball, moving defensive tackle Penny Tito Faalolongo to fullback. The 5'11", 250-pound freshman who hails from American Samoa and played for the same high school as Yosefa says his prep days of Ironman football will serve his switch well. Well, it was kind of easy for me because back in high school, I used to play DN, linebacker, and fullback. So transitioning was kind of easy for me. Because I played it before, you know. Well, same thing as defense coming to hit somebody up, you know. Uh, I think they get a physical player. Uh, he can block well. He's got good hands. Uh, he's, he's a solid kid. So I think that's it's going to help him in the run game, no doubt. What does he bring to this side of the ball, and how excited are you to have him alongside you? Yeah, it's pretty exciting. You know, I, I knew him from high school. We played together, same offense and defense. So I think he's going to be a big help for us. Yeah. He's that type of guy. Just come down, just look for somebody here. You know, if you tell him to go here, you go hit somebody in the mouth. So it really is going to help us, you know, fullback wise, you know, open out those holes for us in, in the backfield. So it's going to be a big help for us in offense. After a day off yesterday, the Rainbow Warriors had their second of four two-a-day practices today. Tomorrow, back to a single practice day starting at 10. On the hardwood, an old whack rivalry will be relived as part of ESPN's College Hoops tip-off marathon November 12th. It was announced today that Hawaii's matchup with New Mexico State was picked up by the network and will be broadcast on ESPN2 with a midnight start time. It's the final game of the season opening Rainbow Classic and will mark the 19th meeting between the two programs. And first, since Hawaii was a member of the Western Athletic Conference, Bows are 4-1 all-time in tip-off marathon games. Talking NFL now, we're Punahou grad and Chargers rookie linebacker Manti Teo is dealing with a sprained right foot. Happened last week in San Diego's preseason opener against the Seahawks. The popped tire, which Teo didn't detect until after the game, will keep him out of this week's preseason tilt with the Bears. Manti himself had yet to talk to the media about the nature of the injury. That is until today when he went front and center at a Chargers press conference. 
it wasn't really sore. It was just a little. It was a weird feeling, and just went to go ch get it checked, and you know they said just rest. You know, anytime I don't get to play, um, it's very disappointing, and especially you know playing uh, in Chicago, um, knowing a lot of people there with Notre Dame being right there. You know, it's uh, definitely something I was looking forward to, but you know, thankfully, um, Coach McCoy allowed me to go, so I'll still be there. Um, just won't be able to play. You know, I'll be ready when they give me the green light, and when they do. Um, I'll, I'll be suited up. As for his NFL preseason debut, Teo started at inside linebacker, seeing nine snaps and recording no tackles. Uh, I did all right. Uh, and didn't you know, do as well as I wanted to, but I think you know I did all right. It was my first time out there. It was it was okay. No matter where the ball is, you know, you always want to get to it. And so, you know, that's something that I'm going to continue to work on. And you know, it was good to get the first game jitters out. I think as rookies, when you first get out there, uh, no matter how much you try to relax, you know, it's something you worked your whole life. And uh, you know, to not be nervous, you know, it's kind of impossible. Chargers visit the Bears on Thursday. Elsewhere, a World Series berth for the Waipahu Senior American Legion team. They hammered host Eugene, Oregon, 14-3 in the 19 and under regional championship to earn a spot in the World Series in North Carolina next week. Brent Sakurai had four RBI, and Bryson Yasui pitched a complete game for the Island Kids. Pearl City improved to 2-0 at the Senior Division Little League World Series in Bangor, Maine today. Colby Hirano tripled and knocked in an RBI in an 11-1 win. Pearl City will play Elam Central of the Philippines tomorrow. Despite a Pony League record 20 strikeouts by pitcher Eddie Barclay, Hilo lost to Chesterfield of Virginia 3-1 in the Pony League World Series today. Hilo will play an elimination game against the team from Mexico tomorrow. And the Honolulu Saints fell to 1-2 and two in pool play at the Cal Ripken World Series in Indiana. Honolulu lost to Crown Point Indiana 8-5 pool play set to wrap up tomorrow. Bit of an unorthodox thing here, but I would like to send our best wishes out to Don Robbs, longtime play-by-play -play announcer, voice of Rainbow Baseball. He is recovering from open heart surgery. He is in the hospital. We send him our best. KHON 2's family, the prayers and thoughts definitely with the Robbs. Yeah, I don't know if you remember this, but he actually, for a short time, right. was here on KHON 2 doing sports. That's right. But yeah. Many years ago. But yeah. 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 He's a good, good guy and a good friend. And uh, will be one of the uh, legends all time, yeah. certainly, on the microphone. Absolutely. Thanks, Kano. You get it. Finally tonight, a daredevil turned up the heat on his high wire act by adding some dangerous tricks. Tightrope walker Adili Wuxor crossed a wire suspended 380 feet in the air above Guangzhou, China. But walking on the tightrope apparently wasn't dangerous enough for him, so he added a few stunts. The 32-year-old stopped to lie down on the thin wire. He also stopped to take photos of the view with his cell phone, and then he had two assistants lie down on the wire while Adili walked over them. And he did all this, all of this, without a safety harness or a net. Uh, no, that's a daredevil. Yeah, so what is more impressive, that yes. or Nick Walenda crossing the Grand Canyon on a tightrope? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right? You're not crazy gonna, and yeah. crazy. You're not going to see any of us up there doing <laughs> no, either. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> That's our 10 o'clock news for this Monday for KHON2 News. Have a good night and a great tomorrow. See you later. Aloha. captioning for KHON2 News is brought to you by UHA, the better health insurance choice for Hawaii employers. Better benefits, lower cost. Martin Garage Doors Hawaii.